Welcome to another episode of Business with Passion. Each show features guests who have transformed their long-term passion into a successful business. I'm your host, Jay Hamilton Roth. My marketing strategy business grew from my love of talking with passionate business owners. In this series, I share their passion with you. So if you're looking for inspiration to enhance your business passion, keep watching. My long-term passion is always to create and innovate and come up with new restaurants or any type of business that really captures people's interest and um, something that moves people emotionally, um, something that really entices people and gets them excited. Well, I grew up in Iran. Uh, I lived there till I was eight years old, and my family had a successful business there. My dad and my parents had a, a candy company there, and they were very successful. We lived in a great house, swimming pool, big backyard, and I had a lot of fun growing up. I remember really good memories. Uh, we grew up during the war, so we also had a lot of, uh, you know, trauma that we went through in terms of the Iran-Iraq war that was going on at that time, and. Uh, my parents tried to make it as fun as possible. So I remember different nights where there would be bombings and we would go hide underneath uh, doors, uh, different doors and um, staircases. And they would say, hey kids, look, there's fireworks going off outside. And they would make it as memorable and fun in, in, a, in a memorable way um, so that it wasn't frightening for us. Um, but it got to a point where they realized that, you know, there's so much that they can do to keep us safe over there. And they sent my sister and I to the United States uh, and to live with my grandparents. Um, so we came here in 85 and I was uh, 8 years old and my sister was 12 years old and we moved into Sausalito and I lived with my grandparents for a year before my parents came and they had a very difficult time getting out of Iran because they had to get visas and passports for my dad and um, at a young age it's easier to move to the United States but for them uh, it's much more difficult. Um, so I didn't see them for a year and I started school here and I came not knowing any English. I uh, had to start in second grade here and that was very challenging as well getting to, you know, get embedded into a whole new culture, learning a language, but it was very exciting at the same time. I decided to go to art school at the age of 18 and study advertising and marketing. And during that period I met a friend of mine uh, named Rohan who was an um, Indian guy and we were, became good friends and we got to know each other for several months and we always uh, wanted to kind of create an internet company. This was during the boom, this was 1999 and uh, we thought it would be such a great idea to come up with an internet idea. So one day while we were driving to the airport to pick up his dad's business partner uh, who was happening to travel to San Francisco one day, uh, we thought of this great idea to swap products. We were into video games, into baseball cards, and all kinds of different um, you know, items that kids play with. And we thought it would be a great idea if you could trade goods without having to spend dollars. And you, know, you get points for it, and then you can use your points to buy other products. So we talked about it, and his dad business partner came into town that night, and we went, took him to dinner and pitched him the idea. And he thought you know, it was really smart, it was really different, and there wasn't anything out there like it. So he liked it very much and he said, okay, I'll fly you guys to India and uh, you know, we'll see if we can put the company together and come up with some ideas for it and, and move it forward. And I went to India and we, I went to India for three months, um, put together the business plan, raised funding from him and some uh, other people and came back to the United States and started a company. Um, slowly, uh, we put the company together, hired, hired people, and this is why I really gained a lot of knowledge about business and running a business, essentially. I had to hire people that were a lot more experienced than I was, and um, the biggest challenge for me was to have people that would respect me and uh, you know, take guidance from me in terms of what my vision was for the company. Um, the CEO of the company that we hired was a 38-year-old you know, executive who had sold a multi-million multi dollar company. Um, so I think the biggest challenge was for me was to um, have him trust in me and my vision um, and what we had for the company. So a year into the company uh, we got an offer by an Indian company who was also in the same type of business of swapping and uh, trading uh, to buy our technology. Um, it was in a multi-million dollar figure and it was something that seemed uh, like a really good offer after a year of being in business. Uh, so we took the offer and there was three partners in the company, myself, Rohan and uh, his dad's business partner who was also one of the main partners and uh, it happened to be uh, something that was a very generous offer and we thought it was the perfect opportunity to sell it, and we did. After the internet companies, um, I always had a passion for food and wine. I thought it would be the coolest thing to have your own restaurants, um, you know, have friends come over, have the, cook chef for you, uh, the chef cook for you whenever you wanted and make all kinds of great dishes. 
uh, not really understanding the business aspect of it or how much it entails to have a successful business. Uh, but I grew up, my dad cooked, he was a gourmet chef at our house and he cooked for us and had all kinds of exciting meals and um, even, you know, growing up I had sips of wine and, and with food and just found it really interesting, the different combination and I think that kind of goes back to my sense of art and creating um, all those different things with food. It's, it, to me, it's just a form of art, you know, it brings different senses and emotions out when you're having a great dish or when you're going to a restaurant and it just, it's just a really interesting ambiance. It, it, it captures a lot of different emotions and senses that arise in your body. And for me, I always wanted to create something like that. So I bought my first restaurant, which was First Crush, in 2001. And I came into the same dilemma that I did with the internet companies. I walked in there as a 23-year-old, and all these servers and chefs are looking at me like, who the hell is this kid? You know, he's coming in here, no experience. I'm sure they were worried about their job because they didn't think the restaurant would succeed. And there had actually been a lot of failures in that restaurant as well. But I kind of looked at it from uh, a customer's perspective. I took it from how I would want to experience a restaurant when I go into it. And I think that um, naiveness and naiv naivety, naiveness was something that really helped me be successful because it allowed me to look at it from a different perspective than as a business, from just from a business standpoint. And I went in there, I sat down, I looked at everything from the music to the lighting to the decor to the dishes that came out and said, you know, what would really excite me to come back, uh, to get me excited to come back here? Um, and I really um, restarted the restaurant from that element. And uh, my dad came in and helped in the kitchen with recreating many dishes. Um, I went and talked to all the hotels which were around the restaurants, asking them, hey, well, you know, why do you send people to, the, to these restaurants that you do? and really trying to learn as much as I could about the business and it took off. Um, after um, being open for four months uh, and I remember it was August uh, of two 2001 and we had 60 reservations on the books uh, and I called my parents and said oh my god we have 60 reservations and I was so excited and uh, you know if we had 60 reservations now I would probably die but it was just something very exciting for me just seeing the momentum build so after the success of first crush san francisco i, I thought mill valley is a perfect they're very affluent there's a lot of money in mill valley and first crush is a wine themed restaurant it's california cuisine with wine themed restaurant and uh, i thought it was a perfect fit so an opportunity came up it was an old thai restaurant which was at 24 sunnyside in mill valley and uh, the lady who was there was looking to get out of it and it was a beautiful old house it was built in the 1900s and it had two fireplaces, it had a very interesting charm to it. And as soon as I walked in, I fell in love with it. I uh, decided to buy that restaurant. Uh, it was much uh, less expensive than First Crush, but you know you had to put a lot of money into it to get it started. I put in about $200,000 to remodel it, get it going, hiring the chef. And the chef is probably one of the most expen expensive components of the restaurants. Uh, he was getting paid around $65,000 a year, had a manager there, but also our sales were great. We were doing around seven to eight thousand on the weekends. We we're doing about five to six thousand dollars on the weekdays. So it paid for itself, and we were profiting probably around you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month initially. And this lasted for about a year. Um, slowly the numbers started to drop off. By the end of the first year, I would say we we're probably profiting around eight to ten thousand dollars a year. Um, then at that point, we realized that the numbers were dropping pretty quickly. Um, we just weren't getting the same volume. Uh, on the weekends, we were selling three to four thousand, which you know was half of what we were selling before, and we couldn't cover our overhead. Um, then we started to break even about a year and a half, two years into it, and the amount of work and energy that went into it, it just didn't make sense to stay open. Obviously, you know, breaking even. Um, our sales ended up being, I believe, around a million two for the year um, by the end of the second year, and it just wasn't enough to keep the overhead going. One of the things that I learned very quickly is the restaurant might have the right concept and it may be great food but if it's not in the right location at the right time it's not going to work and Mill Valley happened to be that experience. Um, Mill Valley is very much a bedroom community there's a lot of kids and families and when they go out they like to go uh, somewhere where they can take their kids or if they go out for having fine dining they go to the city um, they don't usually typically stay in Mill Valley also, we didn't have a bar scene. We had a great wine program, but we didn't have hard liquor. So another thing that was very successful in Mill Valley was people going to the bars and, you know, the divorcees meeting each other and, and uh, people meeting up at the bar. And we didn't have that. So that was also a huge challenge for us. So I thought, you know, we might, might be smart to make a change and make it more of a family style restaurant. So we decided to create a Mexican themed restaurant named Mikasa 
which uh, was there for a very short period of time. It was there for six months. And this was during a period I came back to San Francisco to run for a scrush because my manager had left. And I left it in someone else's hands, which was probably another big mistake that I made. Um, if you're not fully engaged in the business uh, right off the bat, um, people can't really take your vision and, and make it come to life. You really have to be involved with it. Um, by the time I got back, I realized that it was too late. Uh, it wasn't the right menu. It wasn't the right uh, you know, feel in the restaurant. It just everything about it was wrong. And I decided to pull the plug on that very quickly. So after Mikasa, many people would have thrown in a towel. And for me, it was a challenge to make that space work. Um, I really believed in it. I thought Milvado was a great location, had potential. So I decided to give it a third try and do a restaurant called Aura, which was a Pan-Asian restaurant. And this one, from all the experiences I learned, I really put everything into it. For everything from the design to the chef that I hired. I'd hired good people before, but I really went all out on this one and tried to make it work. And to this day, I think this was definitely the best restaurant I've done in terms of all the components coming together. Um, we started out, again, it was something which was very, very successful initially. Um, it was Pan-Asian cuisine, so it was very eclectic and different, and people wanted to come try it initially. Uh, we got a few great write-ups. Uh, people really loved the food, and it was very exciting. I saw it really bustling initially, but it kind of fell into the same trap as the other restaurants, where it became more of a fine dining rest destination than a kid's family style restaurant. Uh, once you fall into that trap, then it's a downward spiral because people don't go out there during the week. Weekends were always packed, even to the time that we closed. But during the week, um, it was more challenging to bring families in. Uh, we tried a lot of different promotions, a lot of different tactics to bring people in. And at this restaurant, our overhead was definitely higher because the chef was getting paid $100,000 a year. I had a great manager there that was getting paid very well. Um, and the food cost was definitely higher as well. We used really great ingredients, um, items that you wouldn't find on a lot of menus. Uh, and eventually, same situation as with First Crush, it started to lose money and this one started to lose money much more quickly than the other restaurants. And by the end of it, which was two years again, we were losing about fifteen dollars to $20,000 a month. And at that point, I decided that, uh, you know, it's time to pull the plug on that. I had put everything I had into it, three restaurants was enough and it was time to move forward. By the time I closed Aura, I had uh, put in probably close to $600,000 into that space. And I'm sure the landlord must have been very happy because I did everything possible to fix up his building. Um, and I learned a lot from it. I've made many mistakes and learned and tried to correct them and learn from them. But the best thing that ever happened was I met my wife there, Brittany. And this was during the end period of Aura, which was the third restaurant, and a couple months before we closed. And she came in and uh, a friend introduced us and they sat down for dinner and we had a conversation for, that lasted for about four hours and we have literally not been away from each other one day since then. And to me, all that money was the best expense that I ever put into something because I ended up meeting my wife which was you know, the happiest thing that ever happened to me. During the time when First Crush uh, in Mill Valley was operating, uh, about six months into it, it was still doing very well. And an opportunity came by to have, uh, to, there was a space across the street that used to be called Sunnyside Cafe. It was a restaurant that was there for 12 years and had been very successful. Um, all of a sudden I saw a for lease sign up on, the, up on the window. And to me it was just like common sense. It was, this restaurant has been here forever. It's a staple of Mill Valley. I ate there all the time. And I was actually very surprised that it was up for sale. So I went and met with the landlords and they decided to lease it out to me and I changed the name to Toast. The Toast concept was to create great comfort food uh, for everyday type of eating where families can go and feel comfortable. It's the same type of food that you grew up with, uh, the same type of food that you eat at your own house and you don't have to hassle cooking it at home or spending all the money, you know, getting all the ingredients for it. And I think uh, a big lesson of that was going through the three reincarnations of First Crush, Mikasa and Aura was that trying something simple you know, might just work. Something that people can bring their kids to and families to and have a great chicken pot pie or fried chicken or just simple breakfast. And uh, that's what we kept with to Toast. It's just making really great comfort food that everybody is familiar with and make it really well. And uh, to me, to this day, I think that's a formula that uh, will always be successful. It's something that you can do over and over again and people will fall in love with it if it's a good dish that's they're familiar with and they've had when they were growing up as a kid. Five years after I opened Toast in Mill Valley, 
I was looking to move Aura into San Francisco. Uh, I closed the one in Mill Valley and I still really believe in the concept and the food and everything about the restaurant itself. So while I was looking in San Francisco for opening a new uh, Aura in the city, um, the same realtor that was helping me find a space there said, hey, there's a great spot in Novato. It's very similar demographic as to Mill Valley. There's a lot of kids and families, a lot of businesses in Belmar and Keys. Uh, you might want to just take a look at it for toast. They're looking for a breakfast, lunch and dinner spot. Um, I came up here and our chef, Mike, also was uh, looking in Novato for quite some time, actually. He thought it would be a great space for it as well. We came up here, looked at the spot, and immediately we knew it would be a great fit for Toast. So I decided to put a halt on the Aura project, and I got together with a great architect to design the new Toast, which was a much bigger space. It's a 4,000 square foot space, uh, outdoor seating, with 200 seats in this location, where in the other one it's only 50 seats. Um, it was a big risk and a big gamble, but I definitely thought it was something that had potential and decided to, again, just make the move and try for it. And um, luckily, it's been a huge, huge hit. And to this day, it's by far been the most successful restaurant I've done. I plan the menus and run the kitchen staff um, for this restaurant and for the other Toast restaurant in Mill Valley. Um, I have a big integral part of the initial concept of this restaurant and bringing it together from an idea to a realism. Um, and it was kind of a long haul in the process of doing that, and I believe Sharon went through some of that, but yeah, it was a, a, about a year and a half to two years in the making to get it to this point. Um, so it's, it's great to see a dream come alive and, and, and working it in the, in the real world now. So um, developing the menus and, and coming up with the food that I felt that people would really enjoy, that's approachable and that's good flavor and brings in those, those, those thoughts of home and of mom and coming in after a cold day and having a hot bowl of chowder or soup with a grilled cheese sandwich. You know, those are the kinds of thoughts and memories I'm just trying to bring back with the menu. Um, and it seems to be you know, catching on pretty well. I think people are understanding what the concept is and, and what we're trying to do. Uh, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel like a lot of restaurants would like to try to do. Um, I'm pretty much keeping it within recipes that people would know, keeping flavors familiar, um, that you can recognize the taste that you're eating. Uh, which does make it more enjoyable for a lot of people. Um, some people do like to, to think a little bit more outside the box though and expand a little bit more. Um, I do have some menu items that we do put on that's a little bit more, I guess you would say, creative or more outlandish in some ways of how we're doing it. Um, but it, those are a lot of fun too and some people are enjoying those. So what I like to think here is we have a lot of food for everybody's palates. So we got everything from a grilled cheese sandwich to a you know lemongrass poached halibut with with a papaya relish and black rice and um, you know a nice little colorful presentation to it a little green curry sauce so so there's a lot of flavors and a lot of a lot of things on our menu that can um, appease to a lot of people so it's been a lot of fun so far you know gained like 20 pounds coming up with our fried chicken recipe and getting it just right but it's it's been going really good so far. My mom has been an instrumental help in helping with the restaurants. She does all the accounting for the restaurants, so she goes back and forth between the three of them and makes sure the money is there and everything is intact. And that's a huge thing that I don't have to worry about. I mean, for many restaurants, I have to worry about theft. We have to worry about, you know, am I going to make ends meet? So many different components to it. And for me, she's watching all those numbers, making sure that everything is falling into place. And um, that, that's a huge, huge burden that I don't have to worry about. Obviously, I still look at the numbers to make sure we're meeting our uh, projections and making sure that the food costs and labor costs fall in line, and they do. I mean, we try to keep our food costs around 30% every month labor around 26, 27 percent, which is really the numbers you want to keep if you want to have a successful restaurant. Um, other than that, uh, I've hired really great people to help me with the restaurants. And this was something that I learned day one with the first internet company is hiring people that have more experience than I do, people who are really passionate about what they do, just like me, and really take pride in their work. And once you're able to create that environment and people can really follow your vision and see what your idea is, what you want to bring to life, they really take that upon themselves. So if they're good people, or if they're people who are passionate about the same thing you are, they really take that, you know, and, and run with it. And so far, um, I've been very fortunate to hire great, great management uh, staff, uh, great chefs, and now it makes it a lot easier for me because I don't have to be at each location, um, you know, every day to make sure that they're running. I really trust the people that I have working in the restaurants and I check in with them frequently to make sure, obviously, we, well, I'm on top of things, but they run on their own now, which makes it a lot easier for me. Because of the success of the internet companies, I had enough money to take chances and do things that other 
people starting in restaurants won't have the opportunity to do. Um, a lot of times people are looking at investors taking out loans and having to pay that back, which can become very, very uh, challenging, especially when you're trying to start off initially. Um, so I put heavy marketing into, marketing into the restaurants, putting a lot of money into that aspect of it, um, paying for top quality chefs, um, you know, getting the best ingredients that I could. Um, these were things that many startups don't get the opportunity to do because they have to obviously look at the business side of it and make sure that they'll be able to stay afloat six months into the restaurants. In 2009, First Crush is, uh, had a little bit of a downturn actually during the economy. It's, it is a fine dining restaurant and, and tourism had definitely slowed down in San Francisco. Uh, but we're starting to pick back up. Uh, the numbers have steadied out a little bit, so during the weekdays right now we're doing between 100 to 150 covers, and on the weekends we're doing anywhere from 150 to 250 covers. Our sales have probably dropped down, I would say, to around 2.5, 2.6 million a year. Uh, Mill Valley has stayed pretty consistent uh, in 2009, I think, also again due to the style of food that we're serving, it's comfort food, and uh, people even in a downturn economy go out and eat. And our numbers there are, we do anywhere from 250 to 400 uh, covers a day there, uh, depending on the weekday or weekend. And our sales are around 1.6 million there. And Nevada, which has been the gangbuster, uh, you know, we do, like I said, anywhere from 700 to 900 covers uh, a day here consistently. And our sales are anywhere between, we're projecting around 4 to 4.5 million for the year. I think the vision for owning restaurants has definitely changed from what I envisioned it initially because I didn't realize all the business components of it. Again, to me, it was just you have friends come over, you're eating, and the restaurant is going to be successful. Fortunately, the restaurants have, have had success and failures. The ones that are still going are very successful. But um, I don't enjoy coming into the restaurant every night with friends. To me, I still, you know, when I'm sitting down, I'm looking around, making sure things are running. And, you know, it's like watching your kid play soccer or something, you're just very engaged in it. So you're not enjoying and just relaxing when you're here. And especially the same thing with me, when I sit down, I don't really get a chance to get comfortable and really relax. I'm, I'm critiquing everything, whether it's the food or the service or whatever is going on in the restaurant. So I try to stay away. Um, I do come in obviously occasionally to, to try things and I want friends to come in. Um, as time goes by, I definitely get more relaxed and I can appreciate it more. But it's not the same idea I had in mind where it's a party scene where I'm going to come in and bring girls over and have friends over and this and that. One of the great things about the restaurants is giving me a lot of opportunities to really branch out and do different things as well. And uh, my wife, uh, Brittany, who I met at Aura, she really, I mean, she's one of the most kind and sweet people literally you'll ever meet in your life, and she always likes helping people. So we start a, started a nonprofit organization called uh, Dine for a Mind which is something that I would really like to get going in the next year. Uh, we incorporated a, com a company and um, our goal was to take a percentage off of the bill or uh, charging 25 cents more a dish and putting it towards a fund where we could build schools in different countries, starting in Africa initially and you know, going to different countries. So one of my goals is definitely to get that company going and really starting to do something with it. Uh, we got the initial stages done and got it going, but I really want to put a lot of time and energy into that and make that come to life. And I think that's something that will be the ultimate and most rewarding thing that I probably will do in my life is to take the opportunities that I've had and use that um, success and bring joy into other people's life. And we do that in some sense with the restaurants, but to really give people who, who need a break and uh, who don't have opportunities like I have had in my life and make that come um, you know, to a reality for them. Thanks for watching this episode of Business with Passion. If you'd like more information about Shah Ram Bijan, other episodes, or perhaps to be a guest on a future show, go online to tv.manygoodideas.com.